This is Wellness Buds, and I am your host, Stella Wingfields. And I'm Laura. This episode is inspired by a quote by Amy Schumer. I am a woman with thoughts and questions and shit to say. I say if I'm beautiful. I say if I'm strong. You will not determine my story. I will. Thank you, Amy Schumer, for this perfect quote to introduce today's episode. I think controlling your narrative is infinitely important. I touched on this briefly in our first episode, but since the way you talk to yourself matters so much, I wanted to dedicate an entire episode to it. Have you ever noticed yourself being a dick to yourself? When you make an innocent mistake, trip over something, forget something, do you beat yourself up about it? What are the thoughts that run through your head? When you look in the mirror, do you appreciate what you see or do you judge? The thoughts that consume your mind, your reoccurring thoughts especially, permeates into other aspects of your life and entirely dictates your self-worth. Since we are basically conditioned to nitpick ourselves. Ugh. So conditioned. It took me so long to get this done. Yeah, I mean, I feel like trying to think about positive things about yourself is just really hard. And like, I don't think I've ever met one person in my whole life that hasn't just been like a total ass to themselves or like super harsh on themselves unnecessarily at one point or another. Like, I think everyone, and if you can't relate to this, like, please let me know because I just really don't think I've ever met a person who hasn't been that way to themselves at one point or another, like maybe not entirely all the time. I mean, yeah, trying to even think of positive things about myself before I even started writing them down took an obnoxious amount of time and writing it down took three days just to write it. That's when I like allowed my body to cringe while writing. To like actually put it to a piece of paper or a word document or whatever. Exactly. It was painful and I'm just like cringing into my own body. And I, it was because every time I would think of something positive, I could remember all of the times I had picked that apart and all of the flaws I had already found. And I feel like that's so relatable, though. So that's why I really wanted to do this episode, because I just want everyone who is listening to either write down 10 things that you like or love about yourself, or if you really can't put it to paper yet, just like start thinking about things that you like about yourself. I challenge yourself to do five physical aspects and five personality traits that you like or love. And like we just kind of talked about, if this is hard for you, you're definitely not the only one, but take some time to think about it. And if you are struggling, or even if you're not, I think maybe it'll help to try to think of yourself as a friend, because you're not a dick to your friend, you know, like if they're a true friend, you're not going to be rude to them and you can see the best in them. So I think maybe trying to like be a little bit outside of yourself, looking at yourself, like what would you tell your friend? I could way more easily write down all the wonderful things about Laura. I could probably just like lift 50, list 50 things um, like off the top of my head. So easy, more easy, like just way easier than I could have for myself had I not already practiced looking for positive things within myself for quite some time. I've mentioned before that I've had a lot of insecurity issues over life until I kind of started reframing the way that I think about myself. So I have had some practice just trying to look for the positive things. Yeah, so I I've been doing daily positive affirmations to myself about myself regularly And I'll just share with you 10 things, although at this point, I definitely could list more. But yeah, I'll just say that this is pretty personal, so buckle up. (laughs) Physically, I love the color of my eyes. They change depending on what I'm wearing, my mood, if I cry. (laughs) Since they're hazel, uh, yeah, they just kind of go all over the place, and I really love it, especially when they're green. I love my hair. It's crazy curly, and I've only recently... And I mean, like, within the last three years, have I fully loved and embraced my curls? Definitely helps that I finally found someone who can properly cut these locks. I know you can't see me, but I am flipping my hair as we speak. Number three, I love my titties. Um, This was not always the case. And I know growing up, my boobs just went from, like, non-existent to bam. Like, no bras for me whatsoever, unless it was a sports bra. 
and I usually wore a minimum of two sports bras to contain how massive my chest was. I was forever uncomfortable because my boobs were so damn big. Laura met me right before my surgery, so I'm not sure how much you remember of how I looked before then, or like even if that was on your I, radar. I mean, I remember they were very large. I don't remember the yeah. full dramatics because I think, yeah, honestly, like two months in a meeting was when you had your reduction. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. How could you not remember that they were massive? Though? <laughs> <laughs> That's the only <laughs> way to describe them. Oh, so funny. But yeah, after I got my reduction which was entirely covered by my insurance, by the way, because they were just that much larger than what should be for, like, my frame. I really just wondered, though, why the hell didn't I do this sooner? Because I felt so much better about my body and just about myself. I lost two pounds of boob. um, My back pain was gone, so that was pretty tight. Um, Scars and all, I love them so much now. It's just, it makes such a difference, so... I'll just say if anyone is on the verge or like teetering between whether I should or not, if you have the same issue, just freaking go for it. Number four, I love all my tattoos. I love the way they make me feel. I love all the meaning and stories behind them. I love how they add to making me feel the most me, if that makes sense. And number five, if any of my family especially male members are listening, you can just like jump ahead 15 seconds. I love my pussy. She's cute. What can I say? She's pierced and like she looks great and adds to my pleasure, which helps with my mental well-being as well. So just going to say it. And I'm sorry if you're offended that women shouldn't be talking this way about themselves or something. But I kind of feel like I've been like cringing about saying that publicly in a way. But I also just feel like if it's true, it's true. Yeah, if it's true, it's true. And also, like, people should be proud of their bodies in any way that they feel. And that's how I feel. So just had to say it. Um, On to my personality traits. Number one, I love that I'm a caring person. It feels good to give to others and see them happy. And I'm glad that I figured that out, like, pretty early in life. And it's kind of why I'm doing this podcast, too. I really hope that I can help other people through this through talking about some of these things so yeah two I love how dedicated I am even if sometimes that annoys those around me shout out to Josh my husband for dealing with my crazy determined ass (laughs) I know it drives him crazy that I care so much about what I put into my body especially when I'm unwavering and he wants both of us to eat dessert or wants to go out to eat more I know I drive him nuts but sorry babe love you (laughs) I love that I am open-minded to new places and people. Four, I love how independent I am. Fun fact, while in Europe a couple summers ago, Josh wanted to go to Rome and I really wanted to go to Ireland. So we went our separate ways for several days and I traveled to a foreign country all by my damn self. And it was really scary, but fantastic. But um, it's just like cool to know that I'm capable of doing things by myself because before meeting Josh, I've always been like, I'm an independent ass woman. And now that I've been with someone for so long, it's like you kind of forget that part of yourself. But then I was reminded of that a couple summers ago. So, yep, love that I'm independent. And five, I love how connected I am to nature and appreciate just nature therapy and being out there because, you know, when I was younger, I definitely didn't appreciate that sort of thing. But I'm just glad that I've reconnected with that part of myself. So I know that it was cringeworthy for you to do this, Laura, but are you ready to share 10 things that Laura loves about Laura? This is as close as I'm going to get to it, so I'm going to shoot it, (laughs) you know? Yes. All right. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm going to start with my physicals. So one, I do really like my core. I think in general, when I am... In my fitness regimen, I show it a lot more in my core. I have a longer torso than I have legs and tends to be my more flattered part. And I just really like her. And when she's behaving, she's lovely. 10 out of 10 agree. Love it. (laughs) I really like my hair. I, one, put so much time, effort, and money into her. Though you can't see that right now, Stell. You're the only one that knows. And it's like... (laughs) I just have really thick, healthy hair, and I feel lucky to have that. 
I will probably never bold. Yeah. <laughs> you should feel lucky about that. Also, I really love that you're talking about these parts of yourselves as her. Like, they are you, though, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's how I process, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. I just think it's adorable, and I love you so much. <laughs> so, three. I really like my eye color. I have a greenish blue. It's kind of hard to describe. Like, what shirt I'm wearing kind of defines my eye color. But they're light colored, and... I like them. And then five, four, four. I'm on four. <laughs> I like. I was going to say, are you trying to skip one? Because that's not how this works. <laughs> I like my quads. This one I feel like was so hard to write because I spent like all of high school being ashamed that I had bigger legs. And like, girl, it's because there's a muscle there. <laughs> like what? I don't know where I thought it was going to go. So. Those soccer quads. Yeah, I I have them too. And I just have learned and to love I've them. I've always struggled. Yeah, they're the hardest part, but I'm kind of just learning to love them because they are really strong and I've definitely been getting some definition in them. And, you know, I'm just yes. going to need to go with the flow and love them pups. Yeah. And then five, my overall health. I think that's like something I get really lucky for, minus my left foot. <laughs> you know, in general, I've have a really capable body and I don't have these underlying conditions that I have to daily adapt to. And I feel really lucky and blessed, I guess is the best word to say for that. Like I do just have a pretty basic good health at my base and I feel lucky for that. I've had multiple surgeries and I didn't have underlying conditions and I am glad. Yeah. I think that part is so important to remember to feel gratitude for small small things like that I think about that all the time when I'm hiking or doing something crazy I'm like my body is capable of so much and I feel so grateful that my body just functions the way that it should and I feel like usually you don't really appreciate that until something's actually wrong with you I mean even honest to god thank god I can digest cheese looking at all you lactose intolerant people that sounds like a horrible daily adapting so glad my body doesn't reject that (laughs) It's just rude, and I'm sorry to any of those. So my personality ones. One, I like that I'm a really reliable person. I think I very, very rarely bail. There is some form of, I think, like mental health where you have to say, like, it's too much for me. But it is a rare thing for me. I try really hard if I say I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Personally and professionally, I'm very reliable. It's a good quality. Because a lot of people cannot say that. Especially (laughs) nowadays. It's crazy. Um, Two, my work ethic. I am definitely a workaholic to some degree. But it's because I really care about what I put my time into and like what I accomplish and what I put forward as a show for myself. Yeah. And then you feel good about that too. You're not just like coasting through your work. No, you actually care and you're there and... A person that people can depend on. They know you're going to come through with all the effort. Like you're going to do what you say that you're going to do. And you're going to get done what needs to get done, if not more. Exactly. Three, I do like that I'm really outgoing. Um, I can talk to (laughs) the walls or people. Oh my gosh, when I first met you, I was like, I don't know if we're going to get along, to be honest, because I'm just such the opposite. I don't talk to people like that. And like when we would go out and you would just make friends with everyone, this girl. Anytime we go out, (laughs) it's like always, always, there's, I always meet someone new every time. But I like that. And most of the time, sometimes it's a weirdo and I try and dodge them for the rest of my life. Been there with you too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so four, I like my confidence. And I think that's something I was not always able to say I wasn't really always a confident person I know I'm saying I'm confident while cringing about talking about myself but (laughs) I really am confident in like who I am and I feel like I don't feel this need to adapt to those around me or change to those around me like I just do feel like I am that is a really big one so big it took a minute to get there and I feel like too it's a weird thing sometimes to be confident because some people like perceive confidence as cockiness or something like that. 
there is totally a difference and you're allowed to be confident without having to feel bad about that. In a way, I don't know. Confidence has been looked down upon sometimes like throughout life. Totally, especially for women. Get that confidence. Keep it up. And number five, I've made it through the (laughs) list. I like that I'm really good with the flow. I think, Stella, that's kind of also where we balance out. You're a little more particular and I love you for it. It helps us get where we need to go. I am very like, if that's how it needs to go, that's how it needs to go. And we're just going to do it. Like very go with the flow. Presently about to attend a wedding and I've had to be so go with the flow for this. So thank God that's my trait. It's really paying off. And I think I'm really good at adapting and being like, it is what it is. That is a really, that's a really good way to describe you, honestly. I know that I am not always those go with the flow, but I have been trying and I feel like, I don't know, Josh can attest that I have loosened up a lot over these years instead, like, oh my gosh, when I was younger, I just used to be so rigid. Like, if it really isn't my way, like, I am going to say something and I might still say something now but I will do it in a way nicer way. (laughs) But like even the other night when we were leaving Broken Top and we were going on that crazy Mm -hmm. road, I was just like, I'm just going to sit here and go with the flow and breathe. And I'm really going to try to not say anything because that road was crazy. I was in utter silence of nausea. That was crazy. And for just to fill everyone in, we went into this trailhead the right way. And when we left, it was dark. And I guess we just missed a turn or something. So we went on a crazy back road at least an an hour. hour. And usually for me, I would have been like, turn this bitch around. Like, we need to go the other way. But I'm like, nope, I'm just going to close my eyes and just know that everything's going to work out. And I feel like that's the most calm I've been in like a situation where I really could have not been. So, you know, shout out to me. I do agree. I do agree. Because even I was like, I can't speak or I'm going to feed this negativity in this car. Nope. We're, we're going to get we're going to get out of this situation. It's going to be okay. <laughs> all right. So to everyone listening, once you thought about all the things that you like or love about yourself, write it down. If you can manage, if you just need to keep thinking about it, that's fine too. But think about it often and start looking for more positive things about yourself just throughout your daily life. Just now talking about that situation, it's like, oh yeah, I can notice that I am not acting like a crazy person in this backseat right now. Kudos for me. You know, bring it to the forefront of your mind of like how you're acting, what you're doing, or if you notice something that you like about yourself in the mirror, just start looking for those things. Just point it out in your head and like feel good about that. And it will get easier with practice. This will help you feel good and appreciate all the things that are so uniquely you. I challenge yourself when you look in the mirror to focus on the positive things instead of the things that might not be your favorite. That's all that it is. It's just something that you might not like as much. No need to focus on it, right? What does fixating on the things that you don't like actually accomplish other than making you feel horrible about whatever it is that you don't particularly like? It could be motivation to try to change that thing, but look at it that way instead of looking at it as like disgusted or with negative feelings. I used to be a person who looked in the mirror and specifically only focused on the things that I didn't like when I was younger. I would just like grab my extra stomach skin, look at my back skin, maybe grab that too, focus on my chin or just whatever. And I did not talk nicely to myself then. And that's how I started my day. Why did I start my day that way? Because it never made me feel good. And that was like my actual ritual every morning. And I just did it anyway. And then I would carry that mentality of feeling self-conscious about those things for the rest of my day, which is obviously not good. I think I thought it would maybe somehow make me choose better options like eating wise or whatever throughout my day. But instead, it just turned me into an obsessive person who was developing an unhealthy relationship with myself. It didn't particularly motivate me or influence how I behaved that day other than just thinking about things that I didn't like. I felt down about myself and my body all damn day, every day, and getting into that pattern of thought was not healthy for my mind. And looking back, I could have been like, damn, I look great, or I could look better, but I also look great now. I think just appreciating where you are now is really important. 
And if you're always looking for something to correct through a negative lens, you'll just drive yourself crazy. And I can attest to that, that I definitely drove myself crazy. These days, I look at myself and see all the hard work that I've been putting in. I see all the impressive things that my body can do, like we were just talking about. When I'm on a hike, I'm like, damn, I'm strong. Damn, I can do this. Like my body is so capable. I know there's room for improvement. So I'm always trying to better myself and be the best version that I can be. Only now I do it without being down on myself because like I just said, it just being down on myself literally accomplished nothing positive. And I can see the improvement, but also appreciate all the work that I've already put in to get me to this point. I also challenge yourself if you find yourself thinking negatively as a person to just take a take a beat, take a deep breath and think, why do I think this way? That was me this whole time. Every time I find something positive and think of the negative, I'm like, what is wrong with me? It's so hard. You just had to check yourself. Yeah. I'm like, bitch, why are you talking to yourself this she way? She need to chill. Yeah. Like, for real, though. And, like, who made us think this way about ourselves, too, is another thing that I try to think about. Because it's, like, conditioned to compare yourself to all these models and whatever. I remember back when I was a little bit less healthy for sure looking at all these like Victoria's Secret models and looking at just people who are on the covers of magazines and why doesn't my body look like that and it's like oh I don't know because everyone's body is different maybe and like that's okay actually (laughs) yeah that concept needs to be reiterated more and more and more yeah totally and I feel like too you know Not only the physically, but when you're thinking negatively about yourself as a person, it's also like trying to take a beat. Why am I thinking this way about what I'm doing? Is it because someone's been nitpicking me? The people Mm -hmm. around you who you surround yourself with, are they telling you that you're a horrible person for doing this? Like, maybe it's... Rarely are they. Well, yeah. We just decide that that's what they think because we're delusional. Right. Sometimes. But I feel like also sometimes the people in your life, like I'm not trying to blast anyone, so I'm not going to say anyone specifically. Growing up, hearing certain comments coming at you conditioned me to feel a certain way about myself. Like, oh, this person's always pointing this out. Mm -hmm. Damn, am I a slob? Or like, (laughs) I didn't think I was that messy or whatever. But like someone's pointing this out to me and making me feel bad about it. Then that puts you like in this space of feeling inadequate. Okay, so if someone is making you feel that way, is it you taking it wrong? Like you said, like being delusional? Or is it they actually have a problem and that's a them problem because they're putting you down, you know? And if someone's putting that negativity on you, yeah, like a lot of times it's a them problem. And there's no need for someone to berate you for forgetting something or whatever the case may be. I don't know if anyone has experience like bringing something up to someone and then they like flip it around on you. So then that's like another like, oh, that definitely isn't me. They're just flipping it because they have their own issues. So I'll just say, don't let others' issues with their own damn self influence you and your self-worth. Don't let their voice chirp away in your head, making you believe something that isn't even a thing. I think sometimes we talk to ourselves the way others talk to us and we let others' negativity influence how we feel about ourselves when really the only validation we need is from our own selves. So just take that sentiment with you today. Try to... If someone is putting you down, like, are they actually, are you just like taking it the wrong way? Either way could be happening. But I think just maybe like trying to look at it through a more critical lens. Why are you feeling this way about yourself? Is it them? Is it you just trying to think about it? Um, So yeah, I'll just say to take this sentiment with you today, tomorrow, and every day, pay attention to how you talk to yourself and how those closest to you talk to you. Maybe you've never realized a person close to you is subtly putting you down. Maybe you never noticed yourself subtly putting you down. But these actions greatly impact how we feel about ourselves. So it's definitely worth noting you are worth it. And putting in the effort to correct negative self-talk is also worth it. Product of the week. Product of the week, POW. POW. (laughs) This week's POW 
is this bomb tinted BB sunscreen SPF 50. I know we're sort of reaching the end of summer as I'm recording this. And honestly, by the time this episode is dropped, it may or may not already be fall. But... Girl, you wear sunscreen year-round. I know. That is step one of this pow. I do wear it year-round because I am pretty gosh darn white and I need to protect my face from the sun. But this tinted sunscreen just like rules. I put it on most mornings before taking my morning jaunt with my pup Winnie. There are a few different shades available, but I use the fair light option because, like I said, pretty white. The stuff evens out my skin tone really well, and I like having a natural yet flawless look. So this meets me like kind of there. Not totally flawless, but it definitely minimizes the natural, my natural, overly blushed look that my face just has. Um, And it makes me feel really good about myself with minimal effort. And even like in the heat of summer, I wear this on hikes and never have an issue burning. So I really like that. I don't have to wear makeup on a hike necessarily because when I do try to do that, it just kind of goes everywhere, especially if I try to do mascara. Oh my gosh, I did that a couple times this summer. And it was, Josh was just like, um, are you wearing makeup? Like, that's unusual for you. And I'm like, how can you tell? And he's like, oh, I just see a lot of black in your sweat under your eyes. Because I guess my eyelashes were like catching the right beneath my eye part and just like catching the sweat. <laughs> So yeah, uh, not a cute look, but um, the tinted BB sunscreen is a good look. I'll link that below if anyone is interested in anything like that. You know, it is light coverage, although you can kind of like pile it up if you want more coverage. But I just put it on like normal sunscreen. I really want to protect my skin because I'm not trying to do just a little bit. You know, I need that full coverage so I do not get burned. So yeah. I think you might have tried that one time when I had it. I have. I think a few times. Yeah. Because every time you think it's new and I just say yes, so you'll give it to me. (laughs) Whatever works. I mean, it's pretty cheap on Amazon. I'll just have to go check out the link. I should have looked up the price point. Yeah. I want to say it's like less than 15 though. So it's a good look. And as always, if you have questions, topics you'd like for us to cover, or just want to say hello, feel free to email us at wellnessbudspodcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening. If you like what we're doing here on Wellness Buds, now that three episodes have dropped and you kind of sort of have an idea for what our show is about, um, please take a second to leave a review, subscribe, share an episode with a friend or multiple friends, anyone who you think might need to hear some of these messages or donate so we can keep providing quality content for you listeners. We have a lot of great episodes coming up. We look forward to hearing your feedback and we're super excited to dive deeper with you as we drop new episodes every Monday. We will provide bonus content to our Patreon. We have been dropping our peaks and valleys on here for free so you can have a taste of what to expect But on Patreon, we will continue to post those bonus episodes every week of our Peaks and Valleys, PNB. And coming soon, we'll be posting bi-monthly meals that Laura and I will be making and recording our process and progress as women who rarely cook, but are trying. We'll be posting healthy meals and go-to stoner treats that may not be the healthiest, but satisfy those stony cravings and won't be the worst for you either. We may or may not be stoned while making these meals, so just a heads up, if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, I'll post a link to our Patreon as well. We also set up a phone number so you can call in your own peaks and valleys and tell us how your week is going. I think that will be a great way to share with the community. We are all here together. We're here for you. We all have our ups and downs. So if you want to share that, feel free. I would, we would totally love to hear from you. And we can also make some bonus episodes with that material to share with you as well. All calls are anonymous unless you identify yourself in your message. So just throwing that out there too. It will be anonymous unless you don't want it to be. And if you'd rather call in with any of your questions that you would like to be answered rather than sending us an email, if you'd rather that anonymity, again, we're here for you. So feel free to reach out. We look forward to hearing from you. And I'll link all of this information in our show notes. Remember to practice being kind to yourself. You deserve that. And we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.